Hi guys, you're welcome to the Laverse Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. We'll be talking about the Play Speaker. That's uh, the Google Maps Play Speaker uh, widget. This is a special request from one of my good listeners. And we'll be rolling right there to uh, integrate the Play Speaker into an Android application. The Play Speaker is a simple and yet flexible built-in UI widget. Part of the Google Places API for Android. The Play Speaker provides a UI dialog that displays an interactive map and a list of nearby places, including places corresponding to geographical addresses and local businesses. Users can choose a place and your app can then retrieve the details of the selected place. The Play Speaker provides the following advantage over developing your own UI widgets. The user experience is consistent with other apps using the Play Speaker including Google Apps and third parties. This means users of your app already know how to interact with the Play Speaker. The map is integrated into the Play Speaker. Accessibility is built in. It saves development time. The Play Speaker features auto-complete functionality, which displays place predictions based on user search input. This functionality is present in all Play Speaker integration so you don't need to do anything extra to enable autocomplete i'll be moving straight to android studio where i have the source file of this particular application but before doing that we need to generate an api key so you can do that at console.developers.google.com right there on your screen you can see the dashboard we've been using this functionality for a while now if you're trying to integrate google play services into your application you can create a project here over to the, through this drop down, you create a project and uh, you set it up. So after creating a project, you have a sort of dashboard like this. This is a locations pr project I've actually created for this particular application. So in your dashboard, you have the library, you have the credentials. You click on the credentials after creating the project. So it also has to generate an API key. You, you tap on create credentials and you click on the API key. So with this, uh, because I've actually created one. So if you've not created one, you're going to create a new API key. So for you to actually create a new API key, you need to generate the SHA1 uh, fingerprint. You should know that by now. And if you're still fresh to this, just Google and get out to generate the SH1 uh, fingerprint, which is done from the uh, Java part in your machine. So you can just create that through CMD app series of tutorials that I've explained in details how to generate uh, the SH1 fingerprint. So after doing that, you need to just generate this uh, API key. So after getting your API key, just copy and save it somewhere. And you need to enable the Google Play, the Google Places API for Android. So once you click on this link, uh, you have to enable here. So it's actually uh, enabled. So if I want to disable, I click on disable. I've enabled it. So after enabling, this mo this uh, module must be enabled. So after doing that, you're ready. You just need the API key. Just copy it out and uh, move straight to Android Studio. So we're going straight to Android Studio, where I have the source file of this particular application. Right there on my uh, desktop, we'll be talking about the Build Gradle. The Build Gradle Module App Session. Let me try to close up other tabs. Right here in the build grid in the dependencies, you need to include the compile com.google android.gms play services. That's the Google Play Services 8.4.0. Uh, this particular line is very important. After doing that, you synchronize Gradle. Uh, we have the source files here. We actually I actually got the source file from the uh Google sample code on the Places API, which actually make a little tweak and get it rolling. This is quite uh, useful and it uh, supports all what we need right there. We have the rest, the layout. In the layout, we have the activity main, the card.xml, the card button negative. We have for the neutral, we have positive, we have for the separator, for Google, for progress, and for the card stream XML. Let's get to look at the activity main XML. This is a fragment tag with the ID of fragment card stream. What about the name is calling the card stream fragment uh, Java class. 
we have the layout with tonight's match parents and the context is the main activity now we included the layout the card stream so we guess we'll still get to look at all these and uh, now we look at the card.xml because uh it's going to actually create a card layout you know we have a tag called the play speaker card stream card layout you know we'll get to talk about this card layout uh we are sending an id to equal card layout at the style from the style xml card we have a linear layout right inside this uh tag Whereby we are sending an ID to the linear layout called the card action area. We have the orientation of vertical, the background. We set it appropriately at the party bottom called the dimension, and the visibility is gone. Now we included the layout called the card button separator. We have another opening la linear layout which has an, an ID of card contain content area. You know, where the orientation is vertical. A text view follows with the card title with the card content These are text views that are being housed we have a closing linear layout and a view follows with an id called card overlay uh, that's the view and the closing card layout uh card stream from the uh from the tag the layer studios play speaker this is actually calling uh the card layout java class let's get to look at uh the card stream itself which is a scroll view, you know. What about we have we still have the tag, but this tag is pointing at the cat stream linear layout class with a style of cat stream and with an ID of cat stream as well, card underscore stream this time with a layout read tonight match paint. I'd like you to go through other uh, XML classes so that you get to look at what's actually happening there. Uh, we have sort of stuff in the variable, we have the card action uh xml is our drawable files with the selector tags calling on the item drawable from the color you know that was uh, depicting different colors and we have uh the ic card action negative we have for the when expressed we have for the neutral we have when the neutral is pressed we have for the positive and when the positive is pressed we have for tau these are all drawable files being used let's get to look at the java classes we have um, sub packages, you know. First of all, is from the Android.common, where we have the activities and the logger. And we have from the default package, which is the Laura Studios, the Play Speaker, where we have the cast stream as a sub package. We have the main activity and the Play Speaker fragment. Let's get to look at the main activity. This extends the sample activity base. And implements the card stream. What about we have two tags? Well, we assign tag and fragment tag. This is for the first tag and for the fragment. We have the main activity for the tag, and for the fragment tag, we have the place speaker fragment. We created some fields here: the M card stream fragment, the M retention fragment, and we assign retention to the retention tag. The uncreate method sets appropriately where we call on the activity main xml which is the ui i explained and now we instantiated some stuff here the fragment manager uh, we created an object for me called fm and also the play speaker fragment now we use an if statement to check if the fragment is null so if it is the fragment transaction continues where we instantiate it with a new play speaker fragment whereby we add some stuff to the fragment uh the fragment tag well, which is uh the play speaker fragment and we commit this transaction we're going to use fragment as click listener for cards but must implement correct interface uh, which is the instance of the on card listener now this is going to throw a new class cast exception you know so if it shows it and it's going to gracefully output play speaker fragment must concatenating with implement on card listener interface uh this that's that let's look at the get stream the card stream so this is also going to check if it's null and it's going to set the card stream fragment uh get the support fragment manager to find the view by id which is fragment card stream from the card stream xml and we have the unsaved instance state this is going to actually save the state of this present application where we have the card stream state we get the card 
stream and we dump the state. Uh, we have some. Let's look at the play speaker fragment quickly before we go further. This extends the fragment and implements on card listener where we have the play speaker sample as a tag. Or we have tags for cards where for intro, for picker, and for detail. Uh, we're going to launch the play speaker from a card which identifies the card action. And also, we request the code passed to the play speaker intent to identify its result when it returns, which is the request play speaker, which is one. Uh, we have the on resume method. This check if cards are visible. At least the picker card is always shown. So there's an if statement to check for the get visibility of the card count, which if it's less than one, so no cards are visible. The sample is started for the first time. Which is going to prepare all cards and show the intro card. What about we have the initialize cards? Which is going to show the picker card and make it non dismissible, which is the get card stream, which is going to show the card. Now uh, we have on card click. So what's going to happen? We're going to use the play speaker builder to construct an intent. You know, this demonstrates a basic use case. The play speaker builder supports additional properties such as search bounds whereby we have to try and catch method to actually do that for us i uh, will be looking at the android manifest whereby we need to add a permission called the android permission access find location this is very important if you should notice look at the metadata whereby we call on the com google android gms version and as well, we have the metadata for the API key. You know, this is where you're going to actually lock in your API key over here. Now, we have the main activity as the launcher activity of this particular application. So, I'll be showing this screencast of this particular application. And I will employ you to go through it. Uh, try to lay hands on some of the hidden methods and classes that were used in this course of this application. And get to uh, integrate the place speaker API into your app.
thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this session don't forget to subscribe to my channel have a wonderful time bye bye